Hello, this is Casual K for Beatstop Pal, and today we have some very, very exciting news if you're an FL Studio user. FL Studio has been updated this morning, well, this morning, my time um, in the US, to FL Studio 20.9. And one of the things that you might notice right off the bat is how dark my grid lines are in the um, playlist. I have bad eyesight or low vision, whatever you want to say. And the improvement in the grid lines here is major it's more it's more helpful for me in the piano roll the the grid line dark lines here or the high contrast lines here is more important than in the playlist because i do most of my work in the piano roll but to turn this on you would go to view grid contrast and turn it to high as you see i've already done this used to be the default and now with the high contrast it just makes things a lot sharper and i love it i love it i love it thank you fl studio for that all right now let's get into some of the musical type things now like i said fl studio was just updated this morning so of course i haven't had a time to look at everything yet but i wanted to make this video just to show you a few of the things that i have noticed i have some vocals that i'm using from freevocals.com it's a website that i'm not affiliated with in any way but i actually i mean I support the website there. They have some really nice vocals over there. Even if you're just using them to practice, it's a good place to go. You can, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. You can buy clearances and actually release songs built off the vocals on their website. So that's an option for you. Buy the buy the clearance, upload them to, to um, whatever iTunes, wherever you want to release your song. Really, really good. But Back to FL Studio. Excuse my voice, I'm not sure what's going on here. What I've noticed in here, when I bring vocals in to FL Studio, let's put this here like this. Now we're gonna match our project tempo to the to the vocal tempo, which is 110 beats per minute. So we have that. Now I would normally come in here and I would click stretch. This is how I've done it for years because this is the option that we had. Let's just play a little bit of this. So we have our. You ever met someone like me? I promise you'll go good crazy. And I got cheeky. Have you ever met someone like me? We'll go both sweet. And I got cheeky. Okay, so we have our vocals there. Now, to change the pitch of those vocals, we have a pitch shifter here. Pitch shift or pitch stretch, time stretch, whatever you want to call this knob. We can actually change this, but I'm gonna change it while we are playing the vocal. You ever met someone like me? I promise you'll go go crazy. You notice the big jump in the sound? It doesn't shift in real time. It doesn't stretch the vocals in real time. So let's hit this. Let's set this back to its default, and then go down here to Stretch Pro. This is something that's brand new. I've, this is brand new to 20.9, and this is excellent. Now when we're going to play the vocals, I'm going to shift the time in real time. And this could be used for many things. Hold on here. I'm just trying to get this play here back to normal. Have you ever met someone like me? I promise you'll go crazy. All right, now we're going to go ahead and stretch it. And I got cheeky. That's up 200%. Have you ever met someone like me? We'll go both sweet. Down 200 cent. Down 400. But you see how we can change the, the pitch of the vocal in real time now. And now that you can do that in real time, you can automate this. I set it back to default. I can, well, let's do this. Let's bring it down 200. So we're going to create an automation clip and say, I don't know, just for this video, let's play around with this. So let's say we want to go up about there. Let's go a little higher. Right there. And then you can bring in that point here. And at this point, now you could be doing pitch correction or you can be doing this for artistic effect. You know, so it's, I mean, but the, I see the main purpose of this is pitch correction, but you that's not the only thing you use it for. You might want to have a different type of sound like i'm going to play now have you ever met someone like me i promise you'll go good crazy 
And then I got cheeky. Have you ever met someone like me? Won't go both sweet. And then it's all cheeky. We're gonna bring this down for oh, Don't you think I love Hey, you see how we can just manipulate that sound in real time? I love this also. Another great job, Image Line FL Studio. And something else I've noticed. Well, let me bring up something that's minor, but I, I saw this also this morning. Now, I'm going to make another video to go into more details about these updates, but just want to give my first look at some of the things I've noticed. Under the your plugins, we have the sound font player is back and this is a 64-bit sound font player and you can throw in your old sound fonts I used to use sound fonts a lot I know some people sort of felt they felt they sort of fallen out of favor with a lot of people but not me I I'm a fan of sound fonts so we can throw this in there and it's not the best piano in the world but there could be a use for that piano so being able to have that back in there is great but the thing that I like with sound fonts, a lot of times, is sort of like those extras. You want to add a hand clap or not like a regular hand clap, but like an audience clap or like this and applause. Like, welcome back to the show. This is, you know, stuff like that. It's different things that you can do. You can add a telephone ring. You know, that's why I use the sound font. It's not necessarily for the instruments. It's for the little things. But they have some instruments that are usable. Um, I, usually it was something like the trumpet, I believe. Let's see. Put it in. You know, you can come up with something with a trumpet in there. You add some reverb to it, a little delay. You can make that sound good. So... The sound part player being back is actually another great thing. Um, something else I noticed was the patcher has a mini map now. So you have this little mini map down here in the patcher. And that's only when you're in the map view. So let's do this. So if say we're going to map out an instrument. Something like this. All right, so now this is normally you have your surface controls. You might do whatever, whatever like that. You go to the map. Now you can see in this this little formation, this little plugin, it's not as detailed as some, but you might get lost. And now you definitely have a little mini map down here. Help you move around your surface. I mean, your, your, um, your patcher program. All right. Now that might be minor for some people, but if you really get detailed with patcher, it can get complicated. Let's open up another one just to see some like a prowl notes. Some of these programs can really get complicated. So when you're going in and you want to get back to a certain point, it's a lot easier now that you have this little map tool. So like you see this, you know, you might actually my computer's locked up a little bit. As you can see where you're working at. I, I mean, I think this is nice also, but it's not it's not major if you don't use Patcher in this way. But if you do, it's something extra that's really nice. Uh, what else can we look at real fast? I went over the sound font thing that was big. Oh, they have um, Vintage Chorus. And this is modeled off of the Juno 6, I believe it is. Vintage Chorus, where are you? Yes, here we go. So you can you have the Juno, the old Juno six presets. I don't. I'm not gonna play any music with it right now. But this is nice to have this in here. And what else did I notice off front? New time and some new settings in New Time. I don't own the um, New Time actually, so I don't mess with it. But I know there's some updates to New Time. Do I even have it installed? I mean, it comes in demo version. If you don't have it, if you didn't pay for it, but I don't mess with that. I don't even I don't even have it installed on my computer. Uh, Patch, I just went over that sound font player. We looked looked at that quickly. Uh, pitch shifter. This is nice also. 
what is the pitch shifter right here I can see using this let's go back to the vocals actually so let's put this on the vocal track We're gonna play the vocals and I'm gonna change some of the presets. Have you ever met someone like me? I promise you'll go good crazy. And I go cheeky. Have you ever met someone like me? We'll go both sweet. And I go cheeky. Oh, 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 don't you think I. Okay, let's do this again. Have you ever met someone like me? I promise you'll go good crazy. Have you ever met someone like me? We'll go both sweet and a little cheeky. Oh, don't you think I look pretty in my it's, it's, No, there's tons of ways to use this pitch shifter, and I'll definitely use this in the upcoming video, so I'll give you a lot more detail about that later. But you can also use it on say drums let's bring on some drums real quick Alrighty, righty we're gonna just put a simple drum pattern in and you can see how it works the pitch shifter i'm gonna turn this down so all right if i just turn that down go back into our drum to make a quick pattern here I had it down here. Let's take that off. We want to make sure we're on the right pattern. So, something super simple. Matter, matter of fact, not that simple. This is where those dark lines really help me at right here. All right, so now we have this little drum pattern. Let's make it two bars. All right, so you got the little thing there. Now we're gonna throw a, the pitch shifter right here onto the drum bus. And we're gonna put the fourth up. You have to see how that sounds. I mean, it's just, there's tons of options you can do with this. This this is going to be big also. And I'll definitely make a video using Pitch Shifter on the drums in the future. But for right now, I just want to let you know the FL Studio 20 has been updated to 20.9. Stay tuned for more videos from Beats.pow. Casual K, have a nice day.